is no. Yes, about tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, I am. Well, I've still loads to do. I'm running around like a blue ass fly. Yeah. Uh, and, and is our esteemed Prime Minister in residence? He is. Uh, right. Okay, see you tomorrow, Shiri. Bye bye. Tony. Yes. Are you all set for tomorrow? You are. Wonderful. And you're still coming as Dolly Parton, are you? You're not. Oh, bugger. Just bloody bugger. I knew you were going to bottle it. You're all mouth and bloody trousers. Ian Paisley. Ian Paisley's coming as Dolly Parton. I don't believe you. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's going to be so funny. Oh, I can't wait to see him in a miniskirt and a blonde wig. Oh, well, it, it doesn't matter. We can have two Dolly Partons. Oh, you don't want to be overshadowed. Right, right. Look, well, if you're not coming as Dolly, what's plan B? Oh, Frank Spencer, genius, wonderful. Everybody loves Frank. No, it doesn't matter if you can't do the voice. Well, you just do the mannerisms, don't you? Oh, for crying out loud, what do you mean, what mannerisms, Tony? For the, the dogs in the bloody street can do Frank Spencer. Well, you just wriggle about a lot as if you need the lavatory. Come to think of it, you do that anyway. Oh, don't be so bloody precious. It's just a bit of fun. Now, listen, I need you to get there early. Yes, because I'm doing my party piece, which I've yet to rehearse. Mm. No, I want you to turn the music on for me. Yes. The, you manage it. You're a big boy. All right. No, no one else is coming as Frank, I can assure you. No one. And Cherie? Is she still coming as Cruella de Vil? Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. All right, I'll see you tomorrow then. No, no one else is coming as Frank. Trust me, I'm a politician. Bye-bye, darling. Bye-bye. Oh, the bloody ego has landed. Oh, Betty, I can't do it because Ian Paisley's doing it. Who cares? Get a grip. All right, who's next? Ah. All right. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Adams. Yes, my Molum. That's right. Yeah, about tomorrow. Yes, you're coming. Good, good. Now, I have you down as a bearded lady. Is that right? You what? You want to come as Frank Spencer? You... Bugger. Just bloody bugger. Hello, Mr. Adams. Sorry about that. I lost you there for a moment. Yes, so you're coming as Frank Spencer. That's wonderful. Well, it might be an idea for you to lose the beret. You know, in view of your previous... Yes, yeah. But, oh, you can do the voice, can you really? Right. Well, you know, I don't actually recall Frank Spencer having a beard or spectacles. Hmm. Well, you may just look like a rather mature Che Guevara. Yeah, shave it off. Shave your beard off. Oh, no, no, that's not a good idea. That's not a good idea, Mr. Adams. No. You know, Billy Connolly did that, and um, he looked like a potato. Hmm. Yes, and you never know what's going on, do you, under a beard? Well, you, you could have an extra chin, a crop of boils, who knows? Mm. Yes, well, well, I think the bearded lady's so much more straightforward, isn't she? You know? Yeah. Well, you just need a frock and a bit of lipstick, really. Yes, of course. All right, all right. So, the bearded lady it is, then. All right, wonderful. Mm. What kind of a heel? Oh, well, maybe a little kitten heel. Yes. Well, we don't want you falling over after your, your, your first pint of Guinness, do we? You know, showing your new, your new French underwear to the press. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, for crying out bloody.
Daddy, Loud, this is a nightmare. I mean, two grown men both want to come as Frank Spencer, a bloody idiot who gets everything wrong. No change there, then. Right, I've got to, I've got to try my outfit on. Oh, I think it's going to be a bit tight. My got to give up the cream coats, love. Now, let's see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And love. Oh, and a hat. Oh, I love this hat. I love it. <laughs> right, who's next on the agenda? Oh, Mr. Trimble. Right. Mm-hmm. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Trimble. Yes, it's Mo Molum. That's right. About tomorrow. You're coming? Oh, wonderful. Now, I have you down here as the little drummer boy. Is that right? You're not? Oh, you don't believe in dressing up, do you not? So that thing you do every year in July where you put the the hat and the sash and the gloves, you don't consider that to be dressing up, do you not? Right. I owe her... A, I owe your secretary an apology. Whatever for? No. No. I did not use a profanity. Yes, I am given to colourful language. Uh, yes, I am. But in this case, I bloody well didn't. No. No. If you would listen to me for a moment. Mr. Trimble, I rang your secretary. I told her I was delayed. I was waiting for a Fokker at Waterford Airport. No. If you lived in the real world, Mr. Trimble, you would know that a Fokker is an aircraft, you stupid boy. Hello? Hello? Oh, well, the same to you with knobs on, Mr. Trimble. Oh, I need a real bloody drink. This is awful. Okay. One more call. That's it. Oh, yes. Yes. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Ahern. Oh, you recognise my voice. Yes, my Merlin. Very nice. Very clever. Yes. About tomorrow, that's right. You're still coming, are you? With Mary, your, your tonister. Uh, oh, sorry. I stand corrected. Tonister, yes, yes. So, and, and have you decided on your costume? Oh, Houdini, oh, wonderful, the escapologist, oh, very good. And Mary's going to be your assistant, wonderful. Yes. So, so tell me, Mr. Bertie, what does one, how does one manifest oneself as Houdini? Swimming trunks and handcuffs, oh, that sounds like lots of fun. Yes. <laughs> but won't you be a little bit chilly? Oh, you're going to get dressed. After, after you submerge yourself in a tank of water. Mm. And where are you going to do that? At my party. Oh, no. I, I don't... You, you can't bring a tank of water to a party, Mr. Ahan. Well, there's health and safety. And if I recall, didn't Mr. Houdini come a cropper? Yeah, didn't he drown doing that, that act? Yeah. Well, you can't possibly think you're better than Houdini, Mr. Ahan. You're not a gambling man, are you? Well, you can hardly call a flush on the horse. It's the same thing. This is really... Di no, no, I don't... Yes, I know if you get into difficulties, we can smash the glass. Yes, but there'll be water and glass everywhere. Yes, I know it will save your life, but, but it will ruin my party. Oh, no, uh, no, it's not a good idea. Uh, no. No, I tell you, why don't I have an idea? Why don't you and Mary come as Batman and Robin? 
No, I have the costumes. Well, years ago, I went to a party with Margaret Thatcher. We went as Batman and Robin. Well, actually, I went as Robin, but she's such a bloody egomaniac, she turned up as Superman. Yeah, well, I was. Well, I was a redundant Robin for the night. Well, I did get my own back in a way. She got completely smashed. Yeah, I thought she could fly. Jumped off the piano and broke her bloody leg. <laughs> it was a great night. <laughs> no, I'm sure Mary will look lovely as Robin. Of course you'd be Batman. You're the, you're the Tishik and she's just the, the what's name, isn't she? Yes. All right, then. OK, so we're all sorted. All right. So I'll see you tomorrow, Bertie. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Go around. Now, relax, Mo. Just relax. Big breath. Do your speech. Chest out. And greet everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to my party tonight. It's wonderful to see you all. Now, as you know, during the recent cabinet reshuffle, I went away on holiday. And while I was away, I wrote a little ditty in anticipation of my return to Northern Ireland. So, music maestro, please. And I must have bought about 44 postcards, but I haven't written a line. Well, what can I say? I'm bored, I'm fed up, I'm having a horrible time. I miss all the hustle, the bustle, the noise and the clashes. I miss those marches, Ulster's sons and those bloody orange sashes, cos I'm a Molan. M-O-W-L-A-N. I'll say it again. Cos I'm a Molan. M O W L M. I haven't been reshuffled or sacked. I haven't been replaced. I'm still the boss lady, a Blair babe, a minister in a state. I can make David Trimble tremble. I can pull Jerry Adams' beard. I can do lots of things other girls can't that are wonderful and weird. Because I'm a Molan. M O W L A M. I'll say it again. Cause I'm a Molam. M O W L A M. I challenged Ian Paisley to a snowball fight one night. I know about tactics, I've had lots of practice, and I beat him out of sight. Oh, he stamped his foot, he shook his fist, and I'm sure I heard him whine. Well, that's just like her. She doesn't fight fair and her balls are bigger than mine. Cause I'm a Mullen. M-O-W-L-A-M. I'll say it again. Cause I'm a Mullen. M-O-W-L-A-M. That's right. Thank you so much for coming tonight, all of you. You all look wonderful. Hats off to you.